Hi there, and welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of building your own algorithm in vSIG file. And I still want you to read the manual and look at those books that I recommended last time. Maybe this video will just show you how simple it is once you understand a few basic ideas. Without further hesitation, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in vSIG file, and here's the preset that I just described. Now, in order to make this more understandable, I'll break it down into the major sectors. This here is the first delay line. This here is the second delay line. This is a stereo mixer that brings them both together. And this is the dither aspect of the preset. This allows you to texture the output by selectively bringing down the bit rate to emulate some older machines. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all the modules and bring them back in in order so that you can distinguish the audio path from the control path from the user interface path. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, now I'm going to take away the user interface modules and I'm going to take away the control modules. And now what are we left with? We're left with the audio path. So, like I said in the first video, vSIG file is not going to teach you how to make uh, your own effects. You're going to need to know how to do that, but this is going to be the tool or the environment that allows you uh, to actually make it happen and then load it onto a compatible machine, in this case the HA1000FW. So, these here, this IN1 and IN2, represent two of the four physical analog inputs coming into the machine. Now these are going into the first digital signal processor, which is going to process the audio. Now, you would say, why not just put a delay? Okay, well if we go from here to a delay, and then straight out here to the physical output, we're not going to hear our actual fundamental sounds, whether it be a synth or a guitar or anything, We'll play, and then we'll hear that sound repeated back however many milliseconds later we've set the delay to repeat at. But we want to hear the initial signal and then the echo on top of that. So we put a small mixer. Now what we have happening is we have the initial audio going to a mixer. The output of the mixer goes to the delay module. The output of the delay module goes to a high cut module because I want to dampen down the high frequencies on the echoes. And then that comes back to the mixer. So now the signal in the mixer consists of the original signal and the echoed signal that has been filtered with a high cut. And that, you see, keeps recirculating. Now we're going to have to add a knob there to make sure that it doesn't recirculate 100% or we're going to wind up with runaway feedback. And uh, anybody who's been in audio for uh, any length of time or if you've messed with a guitar pedal and turned the intensity or the feedback all the way up, you understood that it looked like World War III was coming and you had to shut down your equipment. So we don't want that. But in any case, that's what it looks like. So we have one delay line here. You're coming in. you got a delayed signal which is then filtered, fed back to the mixer, and it keeps cascading down. Okay, so where does it make its way out? After the high cut. After the high cut, I have it going to a stereo mixer in channel 1. I have an exact copy of what's going on up here, over here, and that's going to channel 2 of the stereo mixer. Now I'm going to have to add controls so that I can pan one all the way to the left and one all the way to the right. And then I'll set them at slightly different times and thicken it up. Lastly, the stereo mixer's outputs go to these dither modules. This is where we have the option to reduce the bit rate to create a texture for the overall sound.
from the dither modules, they are going to the physical outputs. So, what are these little blue things over here? This is for controllers, external controllers like MIDI, um, that you can use to modulate parameters from a physical device outside the machine. Okay, and then these pink ones over here, these represent the soft keys that you see on the front of the machine. So there's four soft keys, there's four of these blocks. Now that you've seen the audio path, let's go and add the control modules so you can see what those do. Now we have the control modules added. We have the audio path that you already recognize. And over here, remember this is our mix of the straight signal and the delay. So we have the echo level, how loud we want the echoes to be. And we have feedback, meaning how many echoes do we want to hear. Right? You don't want to set that to 100% because that's going to create runaway feedback, right? destructive oscillation. Then here we have the delay module and the delay module has a knob that controls the time or the interval between delays. And then here we have the high cut so that we could limit the high frequencies and to that a knob is added so that you could turn down how much of the uh, high frequency is actually in the feedback delay network. So there you have it. This is delay number one You've got your audio path, and then you could control the effect level or echo level or delay level, however you want to call it. Feedback, how many delays there are. Delay time, what's the interval between them. And how much of the high frequency you want to roll off. Great. Now, that's the first delay. The second one is exactly the same. Now, we're going to move along to the mixer right here. So when it comes in, I've got a level knob so we could set how loud channel 1 is. Anybody who's used a mixer understands what this is. How loud is channel 2? Where do we want channel 1 panned? And where do we want channel 2 panned? In this case, I've panned channel 1 all the way to the left and channel 2 all the way to the right to give you a stereo image. Now, the stereo mixer comes out and hits the dither section. So you've got two dither modules with one set of controls to control both of them. I didn't put this so that you could make, let's say, the right ear 12-bit and the left ear 16-bit. Whatever you change in the left gets changed in the right, and then it goes to the output here. Now there's a little fancy thing I did with this control. Over here, this C table, if I open the specifier window, you'll see that I have assigned bit rates that we can change the output to, 12, 16, and 24. But instead of just leaving it at that, I decided that it would be kind of a little fun thing if we put a text knob. So the machine will see the bit rate in digits, but the user will see words. So it's easier to show you than to talk about it. Let's take a look. Over here, a Chi MPC, H3500DFX, and H8000FW. So this represents 12-bit, that's 16-bit, and that's 24-bit. Simple as that. But in order to get a text knob to communicate with the DSP, it does have to deliver a digit. So that's what the C table module helps us to do. So this is what you'll actually be seeing. This is what the computer will be seeing. And the output will come from these dither modules at the bitrate you select. So that's almost it now, but the question is, how are we going to see the parameters on screen? Okay, well that's our interface modules, and on vSig file they call it miscellaneous. So let's do show miscellaneous. Go here, and there you go. Now, what do we have? All of these pink connections will be what shows up on the user interface. So we have our effect level, feedback, delay time, and high frequency cut, right? So those four parameters will go to this menu page, which would be delay menu one, or the menu that shows all the parameters that could be adjusted on the delay of channel one. Now we've got these parameters, which control these 
audio modules and show up on this menu page. Instead of having one menu page go to soft key one and one menu page go to soft key two, I made an H menu page that has all the parameters of delays one and two. Now this goes to soft key number one. So when you press soft key number one on the machine, you will be accessing all of those parameters for the two delay lines uh, independently. Now, we have our stereo mixer. All of these controls, a level and pan for each channel, will be accessible from this menu page here. That, you'll see, is attached to soft key number two. And then we have our dither section, which is right here. And the control, the text knob that'll show you how you're dithering the signal, will be made available to see on soft key three. And finally, we have a text block, which gives you information about the entire preset. So if I click on this, it says, an attempt at creating a thickened and dithered two-channel character delay. Choose from a Chi MPC, which is 12-bit, H3500 DFX, which is 16-bit, or stay at pristine H8000FW, 24-bit. It's dual mono in, stereo out, and then a little signature on the bottom, and we're ready to go. So when you press info on the fourth soft key, you'll be able to scroll through that and see what you're dealing with. Now, if I want to turn this into a guitar pedal or something uh, of that sort, I could save it as a super module hiding the internals and uh, be able to copy that again and again as much as I need uh, for whatever purpose. So let's take a look at how that's done. Okay, I'm going to highlight everything. Then I'm going to go to super mod, create super module. And here I could put, let's say, infinite echo character delay. Simple as that. And then over here I could put for YouTube. Any kind of description would suffice. This is up to you, right? And there it is. Now I have my character delay super module. And I could zoom in on it. Let's say zoom to fit. There it is. And all the internals are hidden. You just see it come in through these, out through those, and you see these user object things hit the head module, and nobody's any the wiser. I could, of course, super mod, break apart, and then zoom to fit. And we're back out here again, and we could work on the internals. Or you could just use it as a guitar pedal afterwards. Save it to your library, use it again and again. So that's a little super module trick, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, and then when we want to send it over to the machine, do MIDI, send, it'll show up. That's all there is to it. So that's the fundamentals of how you want to build an audio effect in vSig file. It doesn't tell you exactly how every effect is built, how to build a phaser, how to build a flanger, or all the rest. This is where those books that I recommended in the first video come in handy, especially the Digital Delay Handbook by Craig Anderton. Mr. Anderton. This should make clear to you that VSIC file is not a junkyard full of modules and wires that have no rhyme or reason to how they're organized. Remember, green is audio, blue is control, and pink is user interface. Simple as that. And you want to get something to happen to the signal between the input and the output. You want to have something to control that signal, and you want to be able to view those controls on the on-screen user interface so that you'd be able to adjust them. If the resulting sound is what you wanted to hear in the first place, you've been successful, regardless of what anybody tells you. So that's a simple preset. I hope you found this useful. Uh, I definitely recommend taking a look at this in context with the first video and familiarizing yourself with the material that I suggested there, because then you'll have the idea of how to build what you want, and then you could come in here and use this little uh, tutorial to help you understand what you're doing. And that's pretty much it. I hope that this was informative to you and uh, has given you some more insight as to how vSig file works and possibly has set you off on your own journey into the wonders of sound design using Eventide 
and vSIG file. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.